In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I added the ability for a user to select the theme of the app itself in the settings and how I programmatically update it throughout the app. Let's dig in. So yeah, I was trying to come up with a good idea for the theme of the app, you know, the colors. Um, and I'm not the best in the world with colors. And so I thought, well, uh, you know, what if I pick something and a user doesn't like it? Well, since I'm not the best in the world at colors, what if I picked eight different color schemes to build instead of one and then give the user the ability to choose? So I thought that would be cool to do. And this is how I'm doing it. This is the settings page, you know, uh, if you look in here, settings. And I've got these light themes here and then dark themes here. I'm still not decided on all of the colors that are in here yet, but a user does have the ability to click one of these and then it programmatically changes the actual theme of the app itself. So the way I'm doing that, first off, I'll say these circles here that are half the colors in them, they are a custom control that I've written. And I'm going to go into how I did that in the next video. I thought it would be too big of a video to combine the two, but uh, I just wanted to mention that's what these circles are. These are a custom control that I wrote. So anyways, these circles here are just the individual color schemes that I come up with. And uh, we've got some light theme options and some dark theme options. Uh, some of them look a little funky in the settings. There's this border here, for instance, but overall, I think they look okay in the app itself, though there's a few bugs to work out that I'm still working on, but hey, I figured the important part is showing you how I did it. So let's dig into that a little bit. So when a user clicks this button, what is run is if we go here to the settings view model, uh, update primary color pressed, and it passes a theme name. And that comes from the actual XAML itself. If we go down to one of these buttons, um, I have named all of these themes. These are names that I came up with. And so, you know, because I'm a programmer, you know, I'm a professional namer and I name these things and, but turns out they're still bad. So, but anyways, this first one here I've called nautical. This one's called neon. They all have a different name. And that name is what I'm actually passing to the view model itself. So it knows what color scheme to go grab. And then in the color file, if you, you know, if you've seen the template, there is this styles colors.xaml file. And in here, you've got some key colors already listed, but I just went in and added my own personal color themes. Each one has a primary color, secondary, tertiary, accent, and dark accent. And then I created the colors themselves. I actually used this website. It's a pretty cool website and it's, it's kind of nice. It has a bunch of like kind of pre-made themes that people made. You can also just make your own too. I use that to kind of get some good color schemes going. And then I adjusted stuff as I went. Yeah, I'll put a link to that, that site in the description below. Uh, so anyways, I came out here and I made these themes. I made five light ones and three dark ones. And uh, that one's called Depression. I'll probably change that name. It's a little weird. <laughs> but uh, uh, and importantly, the important part of this is each key is the theme's name plus the color itself. So primary, secondary, tertiary, accent, dark accent. So nautical, primary, nautical, secondary, nautical, tertiary, neon, primary, neon, secondary. Okay. So you can see that's how I named them. And then that makes it easy to programmatically go out to in the settings here and do this by the name of the theme. So when a user clicks this button right here, for instance, this first color, uh, the word nautical as a string is passed. I set that theme in the preferences. So if you're not familiar with this, preferences is a class that they provide that basically keeps uh, user settings, you know, some kind of uh, persistent user storage and it has a size limit and stuff like that so you know and it, it talks about here on the screen if you see in ios it's in ns user defaults uh, android it's shared preferences you know whatever so but i set the theme name there and then i go out and i grab let me move this down real quick i grab this uh, merge dictionary of all the resource dictionaries that are out there if you're not familiar these dictionaries are here so in the app.xaml file you'll see, and this is just from the template basically, uh, these two resource dictionaries, there's colors and styles. These are the ones that come default with, you know, file new of Maui. And uh, so these two different resource dictionaries get merged into a merge dictionary. So when we grab the dictionaries from the app itself, you can call application.current.resources.mergedictionaries and it grabs you merge dictionaries of type I collection of resource dictionaries. Okay, and then, so as long as those exist, then we're gonna loop through these dictionaries and we're going to do a basically dictionary.try get value and it's gonna look for the theme name plus primary, theme name plus secondary, you know, tertiary, whatever. And if it exists, it's gonna grab it and put it into this primary value here. And then it's going, we're going to go here and we're gonna place into the dictionary 
for the primary color, that color. For instance, when I click nautical, it's gonna come in here, it's gonna pass the word nautical, then we're gonna get down into here, and then we're gonna loop through the dictionaries, and then it's gonna try in this dictionary, it's gonna look for nautical primary. If that exists, it's gonna put that color into primary. And then assuming it did exist, it's going to set that color to be the color that's just called primary. And so if we go back here, you'll see, you know, the default app comes with primary, secondary, tertiary. I added the accent, the dark accent. And these are basically the keys I used throughout the app to set colors for certain things. And so when a theme is selected, basically what that view model does is it goes out, grabs these colors and puts them in here. And then every control is is styled with these colors here. So that way, when you change the theme, you go and you update these directly, replacing them with whatever theme was selected. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of how I'm setting up these these colors themselves and then how they get put into here. And then if you go and you look at, say, user list detail, you'll see button color, dynamic resource, tertiary. So, uh, you know, I've got the circular buttons I've got in the app set to tertiary. I've got text color set to the accent color, things like that. And then that way, when the theme gets injected into those real colors that are used, it gets updated. So you click here, all these get changed. You click here, all these get changed. I will say there's a bug. I think it's a bug. You'll notice if you see these checkboxes here, the actual color of the checkbox seems to lag by one click, and I don't know why. I, I need to dig into the Maui code a little bit and see if I can tell what's going on there. It, it may be a bug, I'm not sure. But so for instance, if I click this, um, that color almost looks correct. But if I go here, that was actually the color that one should have been. And I go here, that was actually the color this one should have been. If I go here, same thing. Like there, you, you see, you can tell the order of how I click affected these differently than it did everything else, which is weird because they're styled with the same. So this style and this style are the same. Yeah, if we look at user list detail and we go to right here, so this checkbox. So you see the text color of the label, dynamic resource accent, the color of the checkbox is also dynamic resource accent. These should be the exact same color, but for whatever reason, the checkbox itself is getting set based on the second, like the previous click. So for instance, if I go here, then here, then here, then here, you can see now it's set to orange. It, it might just be this one. I don't know. There's definitely something going on here. Uh, Cause if I click here and then I go here, this one is orange, but I don't know why. So anyways, I don't know if that's a bug with the, the checkbox or what's going on, but I'll have to figure that one out. But anyways, so you click one of these buttons and then now the entire rest of the app is styled with the colors picked in there. So you can see there's that red, we've got this. I still have not styled some of the icons. So this is a drawn control and I'll go over again that later in the next video. This is a drawn control and I'm drawing an image on top of it, but that image does not respond to the color change really. So for instance, if I pick this one and you come out here, you see the image is still, it's still black. So you can't really see it. I need to figure out how I can do that. The big, I guess maybe the big thing here that I need to point out in terms of how these colors are responsive to a change like that. Cause if you think about it, just changing the, this dictionary, it, it might not actually update the values. And the reason you might not see that behavior is because by default, all of the colors in the app, the way they're styled use a static resource extension field. And that, as you might imagine, builds Builds, it, it you know, kind of builds the color at, I don't know if it's technically compile time, but it, it builds the color when the page is created. But if you want it to be able to respond to resource dictionary updates, you need to use a dynamic resource. So if we go up here, there's this keyword dynamic resource. And then that allows it, that basically hooks it in to where when that resource with that key is updated in the dictionary, everything with the dynamic resource tag of that gets updated. I would highly recommend you go out and look at the .NET MAUI code to see how that's done because they are done differently. One thing I did notice is that the static resource, it actually converts the value for you correctly. 
I ran into some tricky stuff with dynamic resource where in my custom control, where I, if you set it to dynamic resource, all of a sudden it wouldn't take it and it wouldn't do the actual conversion because this is just a string in the dictionary. But with static resource, it actually, it, it would do a conversion of string to color, which is what I needed. But with dynamic resource, it would not do that. And it turns out the reason it actually, what I needed to do was set that bindable property in my control to static. But anyways, I'll, again, I'll talk about that in the next video. So this dynamic resource, that's kind of the key of updating these controls programmatically. So when I click this, they respond to the dictionary change instead of doing a static resource. So basically to kind of sum up, how do you do this? Well, you have a button of some type in your settings, which is what these are. When a user clicks a, you know, in my case, I'm doing MVVM. So I go and I look at the view model and this is the, the command that gets run. I'm passing the string and then I'm setting the preference and I go out and I basically change the resource dictionary to be the color I want it to be. And then that updates anything with a dynamic resource color. That's pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to show real fast is in the code behind for the app.xaml, so app.xaml.cs. And basically what I'm doing here is I wanted to load the user's theme as they open the app or as the first time they open the app. So what I'm doing, and this is kind of to make sure I'm kind of complying with the light or dark theme of the user settings in their app is I've got this set theme method, which runs right here, right after initialize components in the public, the, the app constructor. So as long as you run this here, before the actual main page is built, then this work will be done before, you know, the app is, is shown. And so what I'm doing here is I'm looking for, I have a, a preference field with a key of first load. And if this is the first time they've loaded the app, then we're going to set the app theme based on if they're in light theme or dark theme. And so the way you do that is application.current.requested theme. And that will give you either an app theme.dark or an app theme.light. So uh, this application.current.request theme will give you either app theme.dark or app theme.light, depending on which the user has in their settings. And then I'm setting the theme, if this is the first time they've loaded the app, to either nautical, which is this first light theme here, or royalty, which is this first dark theme here. And so depending on which one they have set in their settings, they'll get one of those two loaded first. And then I'm just going to set the first load to false. And then whatever they change to after that will just be saved in the settings. And this will just happen every time. Okay. So that's for if this is the first time they load. And then after the first load stuff, I'm grabbing, uh, if this is not their first load time, I'm grabbing the theme name from the preferences. It's key of theme. And this is just a default nautical if, if there's not one for some reason. And I'm setting that in the theme name. And then I just do the exact same code we're doing in the view model. We're doing it here too. And we're, we're setting the, the color there. So basically what it's doing is it's loading from settings their color. And that way, whenever they exit out of the app, the color will persist. Pretty cool. I just wanted to show that because it's just adding code to this app constructor, which will then, you know, load up our theme before it's ever shown to the user when they first, or when they open the app. That way you get persistence across, you know, time. So it doesn't reset the theme every time someone closes the app. Okay. Well, I hope that helps. Um, I think it's, it's pretty cool to be able to give your users the ability to customize the app themselves. I actually started to go down the route of giving them color pickers and just letting them set individual hex values. I, but I didn't want to mess with the color picker control. And I thought, you know, this gives me still a little bit of control in terms of what they use or what they set. You know, it kind of, it still gives me the ability to have some amount of persistence of a theme. Oh, I didn't even mention this uh, Lottie animation here. Uh, the first time you open this app, or not the first time, but when you open this app, if I click it here, a little Lottie animation. Look at that. I'll talk about that in the next video too, just to throw it in as a, because it's sort of kind of a custom control type thing too, but it's using, it's using a Skia Sharp library that's uh, written for Maui. So pretty cool. But anyways, yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, I think that theme stuff's pretty neat and uh, you know, I may not be the best at colors. Like for instance, I don't really know what this is, but, <laughs> but anyways, I think it's still cool. Uh, the app's kind of coming along. Uh, I'm adding features pretty much every day and you know, it's maybe a little slower than I want, but yeah, you know, it's uh it's pretty neat so if you want any of this code that we talked about today it'll be in the github repo down below uh, i'm pushing stuff out there almost every day so 
if you ever just go out there you can see what the last thing i did was but yeah so anyways i will uh, see you guys next time with a video on custom controls i think it's going to be a pretty good one you know it's it's a it's a neat way to kind of create reusable custom controls that's how i'm doing these circular buttons and that's the exact same control that are doing these too so but look for that and if you found this video enjoyable or you know found it helpful give me a like maybe give me a sub you know who knows maybe so anyways i'll see you next time bye